Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am excited to be joining Ellen Hudson for a brand new monthly coloring series where I get to color all the things. Okay, maybe not all the things, but most of the things. And today I'm going to be working with some doodlebug stamps and some Tombow markers. These are water-based markers. The two sets that I bought, there's one with girls and the girl has a truck, which is pretty awesome. The boy has bugs and sunshine and all kinds of fun things. So there's two sets that I just think are adorable for coloring. This particular one, I'm gonna color it with the Tombow markers. There's two sets of 10 markers and I'm gonna be just pulling from both of those and lining them up first in my Misty because the Misty is going to be important for this kind of coloring. And I want the truck to be behind the girl, so I've kind of got it placed so I know where the truck's going to be, but I'm going to do the girl first. And I'm going to take the markers and color directly on the stamps themselves with the colors that that section needs to be. So I'm putting some of the brown around her face. I'll put a little different brown on her hair. And you can color the whole thing and then huff on it to reactivate it. So if it dries by the time you finish, you could just go and it kind of heat it up and use your breath to re-moisten it. Or you could just do it in parts like this, which is what I'm going to do. And that way I could just do each section. You can do one section of hair. You can do just the bow and stamp that and then do just the dress and stamp that, that sort of thing. So... If you're using a Misty, it makes it super easy to just keep realigning the whole thing at the same time. And you can either do a bunch of the coloring and then stamp a whole lot of it or just stamp bit by bit. And as you're doing it, you can also see what parts are missing. So the feet, the little boots didn't stamp very well. I was having trouble with that throughout this project, so I'll have to do some of that by hand when I get finished anyway. But I can see which parts I'm missing a little bit of, and I can go back and just stamp those. And add in just a little bit more color here and a little bit more color there. And once I get the whole image basically filled in with as much detail as I need to just to get started, then I can start in with water. But for now, I'm just gonna finish getting all of this color in here. Know that the Tombow markers, some of the colors will discolor a clear stamp. So the pink is one of those, the pinks and the reds are the colors that kind of stain them, but they're perfectly usable. So no big deal if you get a little color on them. But I'm taking a brush, it's a number eight silver brush, and just pushing some water into the area. And it's very light colored, so I can add in a little bit more by scribbling it right there on my Misty, just using that as a palette, because, you know, why not? You could use a block or something, but the Misty's right there. And the color will just wipe right off of it. So just kind of keep adding color in, trying to decide what my water's going to do. I had a pretty big puddle on her face. Um, so I was waiting to see if the water was going to move, and it didn't move the color very much, it, so I just moved it with my brush. No problemo. And I'm going to jump to painting every other piece. So I'm not going to do her hair until her face is dry. So I'll do the bow one step away, and then I'll go in and do the dress, and just do every other part for a little bit until things dry. You can also use a heat gun to dry things up a little bit, but heat guns tend to get the paper all kind of curly and bowed so I tend to not use it unless I totally need to hurry on getting something done. So now that the face is done I can jump in and start working on the hair and adding more color to that and depending on what color I want it to be. Do I want it to be a really dark brown? I can you know put a lot of extra dark color in there but you could also take a little one like this and add some yellow and give her blonde hair or kind of whatever color you'd like. So you don't necessarily have to stick with the color that you stamped her in, but you can just paint it in as well using your brush and a little bit of scribbled marker. And so I'm just kind of doing some fussing around with it. Now notice that her eyes disappeared. And don't worry about that because we're going to give her her eyes back. This is almost like doing an underpainting because now once everything's all colored in and dried, I can go back in and restamp a few details. So I'm looking for a couple spots that I wanted to add some sharper detail or a sharper shadow and coloring just a little bit of that onto each one of those spots. Just giving a little more in the flowers, a little more on her hair and drawing her eyes back in. And then those pesky boots that I will have to fix in a whole different way. 
But since it's in the MISTI, I can stamp right over this and get all that detail right back. So next I stamped just kind of half of her on a piece of uh, masking paper so I could make a mask and then stamp the truck. And the truck is all lined up, so part of it's going to be behind her. But I'm just going to put some color over the whole thing. And here you can see I'm, I'll just do the whole thing in all the colors that I want to do it in and stamp it all at once rather than doing it step by step. So you can you can go either way depending on how fast you color. The cool thing about this is if the kids interrupt you or something while you're in the middle of doing this, then you can just huff on it and it'll reactivate it. And then you can just continue stamping. And if you get the whole thing stamped and you don't have time to do the watercoloring, you can do that later. The color will reactivate nicely. So this I stamped a little bit lighter. I didn't work on trying to make it really dark because I wanted it to look like it's behind her. So I'm going to put a little bit of water then into the truck and you can see how that mask masked out her head so that then the truck looks like it's behind her instead of accidentally stamping the truck on top of her. The paper that I'm using for this is the Canson XL, which tends to work better for this kind of a technique than some of the lumpier papers. The, um, the cold press and the rough are generally the papers I prefer to watercolor on, but for this kind of a technique, uh, it seems to work a whole lot better on this kind of a paper or Bristol or lots of other different papers that you may have in your stash. So. You could sit and stamp a whole bunch of these little girls and just keep practicing with them to get the hang of the technique before deciding what you want to do on a card. But, you know, just practice and get the feel of it because it does take a little, little thought to get used to how to color on the stamp to have it transfer over the way that you want it to. And if the whole thing goes completely south and you're like, okay, now I've totally lost all my lines, everything looks terrible, then stamp it in black when you're done. And then you'll just have this wonderful underpainting and you can just stamp in black on top. I love this look. I love how soft this is. So I'm using a little bit of the purple to create shadows under the truck and under the little girl. And note that placing the truck on a different horizon, a little higher than the little girl, makes it look like it's behind it. Now here is something, if you're not somebody who colors all the things and you still want to do something fun like this, take your sentiment and color on it with markers and make them in a rainbow progression. You can do just two or three colors, a little easier, but I'm just doing a rainbow progression across the stamp until I get the full rainbow and then it's going to look like I used a rainbow pad without having to have one because you wouldn't even be able to find a rainbow pad with such a tiny distance between it because this is a really itty bitty sentiment but I can create that beautiful rainbow you can also just highlight a particular word that way really easily by using markers these pens also have such a fine nib on them you can go back in and add detail so I can just make some little dots to add detail to her flowers and then draw in some little green stems because they're a little hard to do with that paintbrush her boots that kept disappearing I can just draw back in and just go right over the paint that's already there on the page, that, that pigment that's there, and add a few other details onto the card. I'm just adding the detail onto the little girl because the fact that the truck in the background is so soft makes it look like it's even further back as well. My card is just a four and a quarter by four and a quarter with some layers of cardstock to add a little detail to it. But it came out really sweet and really simple. I make a ton of thank you cards, so this one's going to go out to somebody really special. All right, thank you so much for joining me to start the process of coloring all the things, and I will see you again next month. Bye-bye now.